Welcome back to my exhaust fan controller project series. In this video, I'm going to do some circuit design and simulations for the project. The program I'm using is PSPICE for TI, which is a free version of Cadence with a large library of PSPICE models already built in. I'm not going to be showing how to use the simulator really in this video, but if enough people ask about it, I'll be happy to make a short tutorial video in the future. I'm starting my simulation with the items that I know that I have for sure. I have two LM34 temperature sensors. The LM34 temperature sensor that I've selected is very easy to use. However, it can't source very much current. In the datasheet, you can see that the output can only source 16 microamps and sync one microamp. Attempting to draw more current could cause problems. I'm going to fix this by adding an analog buffer to each one. It's very simple to set up an analog buffer circuit with an op amp. All you need to do is connect the inverting input to the output, and then connect the non-inverting input to your voltage. Because of the way an op amp works, the output will be forced to match the input voltage. I kind of ran out of room to fit everything on one page for this video, so I decided to leave this out. Just know that these two DC sources also represent one channel of my op amp each. These output 10 millivolts per degree Fahrenheit, so 72 degrees in my room means 0.72 volts at the output. The temperature in my computer cabinet can go from room temperature up to 120 degrees. I hope it does never go that high, but this is just for my simulation. I have that temperature varying slowly with a rise time and fall time of 10 milliseconds. This is because temperature generally is very slow to change. I also have a 12 volt supply that's going to be used to drive my fan, which requires 12 volts and draws 250 milliamps of current. And I'm using the TLV2374 op amp. This 50 picofarad capacitor is just here as a dummy load. If I just wanted to compare these two voltages, all I'd have to do is connect the sensors to the op amp and then run the simulation. You can see that there's already a problem. My output isn't actually switching as I would have expected. This is because of the input offset voltage of the TLV2374. Looking in the datasheet, we can see that the input offset voltage can be up to 6 millivolts across temperature, so we have to account for that. I set up a voltage divider here to reduce the voltage by 1%, which will be a minimum of 7.2 millivolts. Running my simulation again, you can see that the output switches as expected. In order to drive our fan, we're going to need some sort of circuit to do that. We can't drive the fan directly off of the op amp, so I'm going to add in a power MOSFET over here. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail on power MOSFETs in this video, but we don't want to be driving the input to that MOSFET very slowly. We want to switch from low to high relatively quickly. As the temperature slowly increases, there's going to be a time whenever these two voltages are exactly the same, and the output will slowly swing. So this circuit isn't going to work for us. We need something that's going to switch quickly, even if the voltages linger around the same value for a period of time. I'd also like to have the fan turn on at one temperature, but turn off at a different temperature. For example, I could have it turn on if the case gets up to 90 degrees, and then turn off again whenever the case gets down to 80 degrees. What I'm describing is called hysteresis, and to add hysteresis, we're going to provide a feedback circuit. The feedback circuit has to connect to the positive input of the op amp to create the comparator circuit with hysteresis. This means that our output is going to be inverted from what it was before, but we can fix that later. I'm going to start with a 100 to 1 ratio so that we won't have very much hysteresis on the input. Looking at the simulation results, this is doing what we wanted. I can zoom in here. You can see that whenever the negative input gets low enough, then the device triggers at the output and switches. The switching causes the threshold to shift, which causes it to switch faster, and then the threshold goes up to a higher value. Right now it's difficult to tell that the negative input voltage is getting below the positive input voltage, so I'm going to adjust that. I switched R1 and R2 to standard values, so I now have 4.7K and 100K. This time it's much easier to see that the negative input voltage is going below the positive input voltage, and that's causing the trigger, which then shifts the threshold up. 
I just moved my probe so we can see the actual temperature measurements. The purple line represents the cabinet temperature, and the red line represents the room temperature. You can see that the purple line decreases down until the two are the same, and then it increases up again. Right now, the output of the op amp is switching on whenever the temperature drops below about 74 degrees. And the op amp is switching off again around 88 degrees. Since the output of the op amp is the opposite of what we want to have happen, all I have to do is add an inverter. I've just added this inverter circuit. The pull up resistor is 100k ohm, which is probably too large for our application, but I wanted to run a simulation to take a look at it. You can see clearly from the simulation that the rising edge at our inverted output is taking a very long time to reach VCC. And by a long time, I mean about one millisecond. I'd really like that to happen in a matter of microseconds instead. So in order to fix that, all I'm going to do is reduce the resistor value. It looks like the rise time for this is about 40 microseconds, which I think is acceptable for my application. Now I could use this circuit exactly as it's shown, but I'd like to make a few changes. First, I want to make the amount of hysteresis adjustable. The easiest way to do that is to replace one of these resistors with a potentiometer. And I happen to have a few 10k ohm potentiometers laying around. So I'm thinking that I'm going to replace R5 and R1 with potentiometers, and that way I'll be able to adjust both the amount of offset for the cabinet voltage and the amount of hysteresis for the room voltage. Now that I've decided on a range for R5, I need to calculate R4. I figured this would be an easy thing to solve by hand, so I just jotted it down on a piece of paper. This is a simplified representation of our comparator with hysteresis circuit. Our input voltage is 0.72 volts, and our output voltage is 12 volts. I'm wanting to select a value of RF that provides me with a value of 0.92 volts as a maximum positive input threshold. This should occur whenever our potentiometer is set to 10 kilo ohms. Since I know VP, this is a pretty easy problem to solve. In order to determine this resistor value, I just need to know voltage and current. I already know the voltage across it because I know the output is 12 volts and VP is 0.92 volts, but I don't know the current. The current is easy to find because it's in series with RI and I know the voltage across RI. All I have to do is take VP minus VTH, divide by 10K, and my current is 20 microamps. Then I know that RF is the voltage across it divided by the current through it, which is 554 kilo ohms. The closest value I have in my bin is 470 kilo ohms. To verify my range of input threshold voltages, I set my potentiometer to 1 kilo ohm and recalculated. I found that the input threshold was 0.744 volts with 1 kilo ohm at the input. So that means I should be able to adjust my hysteresis from about 2 degrees up to around 20 degrees. To simulate a potentiometer, I'm going to sweep R5 from 1K up to 10K. The green line is the threshold whenever the potentiometer is 1 kilo ohm, and the yellow line is 10 kilo ohms. Red and purple are in between. As you can see, by increasing the potentiometer's value, we're changing the temperature at which the device switches. The positive threshold changes a great deal more than the negative threshold. It's easier to see why whenever we look at the entire voltage scale. Now you can see that our input voltages are all very close to zero volts. We're looking at only about 0.72 volts up to 1.2 volts. Inside of my house, it'll probably never be above 75 or maybe 80 degrees, which means the voltage on this LM34 will never exceed 0.8 volts. This means that the voltage divider created with R5, R4, and the output of the device is going to cause more of a change whenever the output is 12 volts than it will whenever it's zero volts. In other words, the difference between V room and V out is 11 volts in one case and about one volt in the other case. One last change I wanted to make to the topology was to add in a switch. This resistor represents my switch in the off state with a 100 mega ohm resistance. The job of this switch is to override the circuit and to turn on the fan 
regardless of what else is going on over here in the TLV2374. This 10K ohm resistor provides isolation between these so that the switch won't short out the output of the TLV2374 and it allows this switch to override the circuit. Running a quick simulation, we can see that it's still operating as expected. I can close my switch by changing the resistance to one ohm. And in that case, the fan turns on regardless of the state of the input temperature sensors. There's only one piece of the circuit left, and that's the actual fan. If you just hooked up a large inductive load like a fan directly to a MOSFET like this, you're probably going to burn out your MOSFET. Here you can see that we're getting very large voltage spikes. These come from something called inductive kick. Essentially, the current inside of an inductor cannot change very quickly. So whenever you suddenly switch off this MOSFET, the current needs to go somewhere. And that's usually going to just charge up the drain of this a large amount until it breaks down. It's possible that the fan that you're using has built-in protection already, but to be safe, I'm just going to add in a freewheeling diode. Running the same simulation, we can see that the voltage across that MOSFET never goes above 12 volts plus one diode drop. And that's because the diode is clamping the voltage. You can look at this another way by tracking where the current's going. If we look at the current through the MOSFET and through the diode, we can compare them. And here you can see that the drain current through the MOSFET is 250 milliamps until it starts to switch off, at which time the current suddenly spikes up in our diode. And that's because the diode is taking the current that would have been trying to break our MOSFET. This is my final circuit, including the buffers that I removed at the beginning. In my next video, I'll be building this portion of the circuit on a breadboard to show how it works. Thanks for watching.